In JavaScript, an array is a variable that is used to store different data types. It basically stores different elements in one box and can later be accessed with the variable. Arrays can be manipulated by using several actions known as methods. Some of these methods allow us to add, remove, modify, and do lots of many things to the array. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you with practical and vivid examples how to implement some of the basic and advanced array manipulation methods. Hello everybody, my name is Kuto. Welcome to Coding 101, where we strive to make you a better developer one video at a time. Before we continue with this video, please make sure that you subscribe to the channel, be sure to leave a like on this video, and make sure that you comment if you have any questions, comments, or any type of contribution. Now let's continue with our video. Array manipulation allows you to do tasks such as add, remove, or transform elements in your array. There are countless methods that you can call on arrays to manipulate them, and they fall into two categories, essentially destructive and non-destructive. Destructive methods change your array in memory so you won't have your original copy, while non-destructive methods produce a copy of your array and do not directly affect any change to the original array. We're going to start first with the destructive manipulation method. So these methods change your original array in memory. The first method that we're going to start with is the push method. The push method is used for appending an element to the end of the array. The return value is the new uh, array which you the return value is the new array in which you have pushed the new value. So let's say for example I create an element over here and it's a list of numbers 1 2 3 4 and 5 and I want to add 6 to that array. I just simply say num.push and the 6 will be added to the end of this array. And if we were to console log this array, as such, you will notice on the right side of the screen that the number six has been added to the end of the array. Now let's move on to the next uh, method of array manipulation, the unshift method, which is used for appending an element at the beginning of an array. So you will notice that the push and the unshift method is parallel or different from the uh, push method because unlike the push method which appends an element at the end of the array the unshift method appends the element at the beginning of the array so if we want to add an element at the beginning of the array we just simply say put num dot unshift and then we put the number seven and if we were to console log that array and if you look to the right of our screen let me just get rid of this console Let's get rid of this altogether. Sorry, I'll just put num in there. And if you look to the right of our screen, you will notice that the number seven has been added at the beginning of the array. So that is the difference between the push and the unshift method. Now let's get rid of all of this now. And we're gonna talk about the next array manipulation method, which is the pop method. So the pop method simply removes an element from the end of the array and the return value of this function is actually the element that has been removed. So in order to implement the pop method, in this case, we're just going to say num.pop and what we expect to happen is that the number five in this array is going to be removed from the array and the return element, as you can see, if we are to console log this just so that we can see the return value of that function you will notice that the return value is actually the number that has been removed from the array. And if we can console log our array, you will notice um, that the, our array is now a brand new array without the number five inside of it. Now moving on to the next element, uh, to the next method of our array, is which is shift. Shift is also the antithesis of the pop method because it removes an element from the beginning of the array. So similarly to the unshift, this method also shifts all of the element but in the opposite direction. The return value is the element that was removed. So it works similar to pop but instead of removing the element, would you look at that, instead of removing the element at the end of the array, what shift does, it removes the element at the beginning of the array. So in order to implement that, we would just simply say num.shift as such and if we were to console log this, you would see that the return value uh, from that methodology is the number one because the number one has now been removed from that array. And if we were to console log our array so that we can just get to see what our array looks like, just put num over here, 
you will notice that the number one has actually been removed from that array. Now let's just get rid of all of this now. We're gonna learn about the splice method. I'm not gonna to go too much into the splice method because I already have a video uh, that encapsulates uh, the splice method and the slice method, which we're going to cover in this tutorial. I'm gonna leave some video cards in this video so that you can just watch those video to learn more about the splice methods. But to cut it in short, the splice method is a method that not only removes element, but could also add them to the array itself. It is required that the splice takes in one argument, which is the starting position to add and remove elements. Although splice needs one required argument, it also accepts other optional argument. The return value of calling splice on an array with one argument is, ele is the element that was spliced. The optional arguments that you give uh, that you give to splice give you the ability to cut out a part of the array and replace it with specific elements uh, that you want to give it. So let's say, for example, we want to we declare a new uh, variable over here. Actually, you know, what? let's just work with the array that we have already declared at the very top. So what we want to do is we want to just say num dot splice, and if we are to say two. What splice is simply going to do is that it's going to get rid of the element that is at position 2 or is at the end index of 2. So if you want to see or know a little bit more about how the splice method works, because it does even much more than this, make sure that you check out the cards that I'm going to put on this video uh, so that you can learn more about the splice method. But now we're moving on to another method which is actually a non-destructive manipulation method. And like I said, by non-destructive, we mean that these methods that I'm going to explain to you do not harm the original array or the array in its memory, in its original memory. They just sort of create a copy of that array. So that method is the slice method. What the slice does, uh, by the way, slice also, I have a video that covers Slice, both Slice and Splice, and I'm going to put the card up on the screen so that you can go back and just watch those videos because they will provide even more details than we're going to provide in this video. But the Slice method uh, does just as it implies. It takes a section of the array and it slices off, leaving you with the original array and a copy of the updated array, both of which point to two different objects in memory, which is why we call it a non-destructive manipulation Metaline. So the slice method simply takes in two parameters, a start and an end. The starting parameter is the index at which you want to start passing, and then the second parameter is the index where you want the pass to end. So in order to implement this, we would just say num.slice, and we would implement the, we would first start off with the argument where we would want our slice to start, which I'm going to say 1, and I want the slice to end at 4. And if you see on your right, you will notice that it started. Uh, this is the sliced portion of our array, and it works in a similar way as uh, the substring method in terms of noticing the index. You'll notice that the number that is at the fourth index was not included in this slice, but the number that is at the number one index was included in the slice. So if you're not familiar, once again, with the shift method, or remember to check out my string manipulation uh, methods video, which it will give you a bit more clarity on how index or indices work rather. So now let's move on to the next method that we're going to explain today, which is the filter method. The filter method is exactly what it says it does. It filters through a given array based on a condition. So you would give it a certain condition and it would follow your condition and filter through your array uh, or whatever filtration or you might want to provide to it. So for instance, if we had an array uh, like we had over here and we want only numbers that are even, we would simply say num.filter and we would give it a callback function and we would say, um, first of all, make sure we get our numbers, which is going to be n. So we're going to say, make sure that num n modulo 2 is equal to 0, which is to illustrate that we only want numbers that are even. So in this situation, we've actually instructed our filter method to filter out arrays or to filter out n numbers that are even. And if we want to filter out numbers that are odd, we can just simply say n modulo 2 uh, is equivalent uh, to 1. And we would get this over here, 1, 3, and 5 that you see on the right. So this is how the filter method actually want. So this is a very important method that you can use to filter all types of stuff uh, that you want to deal with. So now let's move on to our next method, which is the concat method. 
Uh, concat method is also a non-destructive method and it is used for adding an element to an array or adding two arrays together. Actually, with concat, you could add an element to the end of the array and you can combine two arrays as such. So we're just going to say, we're going to declare another array. We're going to say let num2 equals to 10, 12, 13. And we would say num.concat num2 like this. And you will notice that these two arrays the num that we have declared at the top and the num that we have declared over here have just been joined in together. And of course, if you don't want to use concat, you could always use um, the spread operator as such. I'm going to show you how to do that. You can just say num and then make the spread operator over here. And this would be practically the same that I wanted to. So these are just some of the ways that you can combine two strings. So the concat operator is very useful for that. Now we're going to move on to one of the most frequently used ES6 uh, method, which is the map method, and it's very important. So the map method, uh, you can utilize this method if you want to transform the data inside of your array. Uh, its parameters are similar to the filter method, but the difference is that map will transform your data and return the same number of elements that were in the original array, while filter does not return the same number of elements that you had in your array. So what we're going to do now is that we're going to multiply every single number that is in the array by 2. So we're simply going to simply transform all these numbers into a vector of 2. So in order to do that, we would just say num.map, and then we would provide a callback function, take in our number, and we would just simply say n times 2. And if you can see, if you can look on your right, you'll notice that every single number that was inside of our array is now a factor of 2. We can also make all of them to be a factor of 3. So the map function simply transforms our array and it makes it uh, a different array. And you will notice that the same number of elements that were in the array has been retained. So the array number, the array length has not uh, been changed in any type of way. The next method that we're going to learn about is index of. The index of does exactly what it says or does exactly uh, what the name says. This method just simply looks for an item inside of an array and returns the index at which uh, this item was found. So if the item is not found in the array, it would simply return negative one. So I'm going to just delete that. And then we're just going to search our array. We're going to say index of, and we're going to look for the number four. And you could see that it's going to return the uh, index at which this number was found. So let me say, let's put 10 inside of this array and let's put 13 over here. And so we would just put 13 and you will notice that it's once again going to return the index of uh, that number that was found in there. So if we count, we can see that this is index 0, index 1, index 2, index 3. And rightfully so, uh, the, the, in, the, number, the item 13 is at index 3. But let's try and find the index of a number does, that does not exist inside of our number array. Let's say maybe 100, and you will notice that index of is going to return negative 1 simply because that item or that element does not exist inside of the number array. And then the next element, the next method, sorry, that we're going to learn, which is a bit similar to index of, but except this method just simply, uh, it works the same way as index of, but instead of returning uh, anything, it just returns um, this method, uh, it returns the last index where the item was found. So let's say maybe you have duplicates, duplicate items inside of your array, it would simply state the last index at which a certain item was found. So let's say maybe we have two 13s inside of our array. So I'm just going to get rid of this 10 and I'm going to put 13. So you have two 13s in this number array and we want to find the last index of that number 13. So we would just simply say last index of 13 and you will notice that it's going to give us 3 because that is where the number 13 was last found inside of our array. So I think that is about it. Um, there are a few functions that I'm going to do separately in our next video. Like for example, the reduce method, I will do them in a separate video so that I can just like teach it to you slowly because it's a method that really needs me to just sit down and explain to you slowly. But if you want to learn more, there's also a for each method 
uh, that you can like research about and this method it's just simply a method or a way of traversing through an array and you have another method called every which is a method which checks if all items in an array pass a specified conditions returns true if all the items pass the condition and returns false if all the elements inside of the array do not pass that condition and there's also uh, an array method called sum so this method checks if an item one or more in an array passes the specified conditions and returns true if passed or else it returns false if uh, it does not pass and many of you may know this one from our string manipulation video includes what includes does it checks if an array contains a certain item inside of it uh, but instead of looking for a specific condition to pass it checks if the array actually unlike every and some it checks if the array contains a specified item so you would just simply give it a particular uh, uh, item to look for and if that item is found in the array then it would return true if not found it would return false now the other last but not least is the join method uh, the join method just simply combines all uh, array elements into a string all right so that's about it for today's video uh, thank you for watching please make sure that you have subscribed to this video please make sure that you've liked this video if you've enjoyed this tutorial if you've not enjoyed this tutorial please tell me why you haven't enjoyed this beautiful tutorial that I took some time to make for you but if you have enjoyed please make sure that you subscribe and if you have any comments or you have any questions make sure that you leave these questions in the comments section uh, for some of these array methods I will make another video to teach you um, uh, how some of them work because there are a ton of array methods out there and uh, I, it's okay I can make content for you I don't mind making content for you but please make sure that you subscribe I will see you next time on coding 101